Well, kindly look on the screen. This is a lovely quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes, who says, a moment's insight is sometimes worth a life's experience. And so is it when we talk about this subject of personal tax and investment planning. Tax is so dynamic a subject every year. You know, you have a finance act. In fact, if you think of it, in the last about 14 months, you have had three finance acts and you have also had two ordinances, which are, you can call as taxation laws, amendment ordinances, and plus, of course, a Vivaat Se Vishwas. So it has been like a sixer in this last uh, about a year or so. And therefore, we need to update ourselves on some of the very significant happenings during this past one year. And I would like to start with the first thing that happened uh, in uh, February of 2019, when the finance uh, number, it was an interim budget. That was when the Finance Act, the first Finance Act was presented by Mr. Piyush Goyal. And at that time, the rebate, you know, I've just tried to make it a little lyrical. I say rebate on your tax plate. We need a close reading of Section 87A from the current assessment year 2021. Because, you know, rebate can be a very potential tool, particularly for the uh, small and middle class taxpayers. Uh, you know, this is going to be something amazing and therefore I want you to have some insights into that. Now, before I go into the depth of the subject, let's take a look at the basics. Who is entitled to rebate? An individual. Keep in mind, friends, that an HUF cannot avail rebate. So if you are working on planning rebate, it would be the best thing to have the maximum number of individuals in your family to ensure that you get the benefit of rebate. For HUFs, we'll have other ideas. Secondly, to be able to eligible for rebate, you need to be a resident. Remember, there is no rebate for non-residents. So if you are an NRI, then you, know, you do not get the benefit of rebate. That's the second rule that you have to also keep in mind. Your taxable income should not exceed rupees 5 lakhs. That is another very important rule. And this, this you know, 5 lakhs becomes like your Lakshman Rekha. And we'll take a look at situations, what happens when you cross your Lakshman Rekha. So with these three important rules of being entitled to rebate, now let's go to how much rebate. Friends, the rebate is 100% of income tax payable or rupees 12,500, whichever is less. The next important rule, in fact, you know, this is something which you would only be able to catch if you read it in, in between the lines. You know, I've called this slide as checkmate on capital gains rebate. You know, there are three important sections relating to capital gains. One is 111A, which is for short-term capital gains, which you get from securities on which you have paid STT. You have the latest section, which is for long-term capital gains, again, on uh, securities where STT is paid. And you have the uh, section 112, which is the residual uh, a taxing section in respect of all other long-term capital gains where STT is not paid or capital gains, etc., which you earn from property and other assets. Now, 
Historically, 111 A and 112, these were old sections. At that time, you know, when these sections came in, uh, you know, there were two provisions. One is that if you are, if you are taking the benefit of the 10% originally and then 15% of 111 A or 20% of 112, in both the situations, you would not get any benefit of chapter 6A. And it was also provided that you would not get benefit of B then prevailing rebate under section 88. Kindly keep this in mind. You then had section 112A, which came in 2018. Now in 2018, when 112A was brought in, they provided that you would not get the benefit of deduction under chapter 6A and they made a reference to section 87A. So under 112A, you have a reference of 87A, but under the two old sections, 111A and 112, there is no reference to section 87A. And therefore, now kindly appreciate what I have put on the slide. When you have a rebate eligible from tax on STCG of shares, say your income is 4 lakhs, which is entirely short-term capital gains, and the tax at 15% would be 22,500, the tax payable after rebate would be 10,000 only because you would be eligible to 12,500. The restriction is under the old section 88. There is no section 88 prevalent now. 87A has lost sight of uh, the uh, CBDT, TPL, whatever you may call, and therefore you will continue to get this benefit at least for uh, 2021 and even 21 22. That should not be a problem. Friends, on the other hand, if you had long-term capital gain from shares, your total income, say, is 4 lakhs, your tax at 10% is 15,000, and the tax payable will remain at 15,000 because there 87A has been provided that you will not get any rebate. Let us take the next situation, how to celebrate with rebate. And this is, friends, almost all middle class taxpayer families should aim at because you can enjoy zero tax income even up to rupees 10 lakhs. The simple thing is, you know, you have your standard deduction, say 50,000, ATC, 1 lakh 50,000. If you are investing in ATC CD, 50,000. You are taking a housing loan interest of about, say, 2 lakhs. You have an LTCG on shares. Please keep in mind, this is a very useful deduction. You were not used to it earlier. But 1 lakh per year, you get the benefit of LTCG on shares under 112A. Medical for your own family is 25,000. And if you are taking care of your seniors, either by payment of premium or by way of looking after their medical expenditure, you would get another 50,000. So that would be 75,000. And bank interest, depending on your status under TTA or TTB, would be 10 or 50,000. Now, this can easily make more than 5 lakhs. You can even go, in fact, much beyond. So what happens is that you will virtually not pay any tax even if you have income of gross income of around 10 lakhs. So 10 lakhs, you take a deduction of 5 lakhs plus at least about another 2. So because 2 lakhs is an average deduction everybody takes. So up to 7 you can even raise it up to 8, 9, 10, depending on the facts of your case. But keep in mind that this 5 lakhs limit is for the total income. So your gross total income can be much higher. As I explained, it could be even up to 10 lakhs. 
and by after taking the deductions under chapter 6a or under section 24 or under 112a your section 16 all these deductions you know pulled together can really go to help but on the other hand you also need to keep in mind that if you cross the Lakshman Rekha frames, the absence of marginal relief can prove extremely harsh. You know, this is going to be the first year when you'll have this 12,500 of rebate and you have a window open for you. Because if you are making calculations now and you come across a calculation like this, it is time if the window is open, try to do something by 30th of June. Because under the ordinance, you have been given the extended benefit of making certain investments, allocations, etc. Now, take for example here the taxable income after your deductions that we have claimed works out to 5 lakhs and 3,000. Friends, the income tax thereon will be 13,624. Can you imagine why? Because 12,500 on up to 5 lakhs. And then on the remaining 3,000, you will have the additional tax and that brings it to 13,624. So just imagine a narrow miss of claiming deduction of just 3,000 can end up in a harsh tax liability of 13,624. So check up if it's a borderline case at least you could even end up giving a small donation you know for a worthy cause and say if you give a donation of 3000 plus you can save income tax of over 13000 this is one of the insights which i think every one of us needs to carry home today